Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and maybe good night. My name is Dean Clayton, and welcome to Smacks User Group. Uh, and in today's session, we're going to do a little bit of a spotlight on what's new in the Smacks ecosystem. What do we mean? Well, we'll get to that when we get to the agenda. So, uh, just as usual, a reminder about these sessions. So, these Smacks User Group sessions are for you. Uh, there are bi weekly uh, meetings for you as technical practitioners. Uh, to either uh, see deep dives and feature spotlights on new capabilities uh, or best practices. Uh, we also obviously use these sessions for our release readiness uh, webinars. So every time there's a new release, we normally do one and talk about what's up and coming. And we also have our office hours sessions as well, which are open for you to ask your questions and obviously engage with us and your, and your peers and ask any questions you have. Um, as always with these sessions, we're always happy to hear your questions, so feel free to use the um, option within uh, GoToWebinar, uh, and uh, if you have any questions on what we do, we'll, we'll, cover, we'll try and cover them, either at the time where you ask the question, or towards the end, seeing how we go on as we're going through all the content today. Um, obviously, because you're here, you should already know how to register, uh, but always feel free to share those tiny CC links to your colleagues. We're always happy to have more of you in these calls. Uh, and just a note and reminder, obviously you can download uh, links to update your calendar, uh, but you will need to turn it into a repeating event uh, because currently you just send it for the, for the individual one. Uh, for those of you uh, who uh, need audio options, obviously use your computer as audio, or you can dial in using one of the telephone numbers that's listed there. Uh, of course, you can also have the option of listening without sound, which might be useful because then you don't have to listen to me talk. But obviously, you'll miss out on some of all the, the good, useful info we have in these sessions. OK, <clears throat> so our agenda for today. So a fairly packed agenda. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, recent patch releases. Uh, we feel like it's a good opportunity to use part of these user group sessions to make you aware about uh, patches that have just been uh, come out uh, for the uh, SMA suite. Uh, we also have a special guest today. Uh, with uh, Jan from R&D, who's going to give us a little bit of an update on the integration engine, uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, then it's back to me, I'm afraid, uh, where I'm going to uh, do a bit of an update on what we've done on the marketplace, uh, all the new content that's available, so what's in and around the SMAX ecosystem. So we're going to go through all the updates we have there, and then we're going to pick off the new marketplace apps that have been deployed uh, and available for you to download and use for Smacks. And then finally, we're going to end on two requests. So uh, I'm hoping that they're nothing. Uh, don't worry. Uh, after a little favour uh, from you all, um, and also sort of should we say spread the word? But we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay. So first up, uh, patch releases. So uh, we wanted to. Um, uh, make you uh, make you aware uh, uh, with the recent patch releases that we've uh, have come out. So uh, for uh, I'm going to do it backwards on the slide. And so for SMA 2021.08 release, uh, we are now up to uh, patch five. Um, obviously within the deck, we've got plenty of links in this deck, and we'll make sure we share those links uh, offline as well, so you can you can uh, click them. Um, within that patch, uh, there is eight new fixes uh, for uh, SMAX customers. There's also four fixes because it's for the SMA suite uh, for mixed mode customers. Um, and you know, in general, one of the things that's quite important to uh, remind you is, is patches are cumulative, so you don't necessarily need to install patches one, two, three, and four before that. But just to make you aware, and it is mentioned in the patch notes, there is a particular feature that requires potentially some additional steps after the patch has been applied. And that came out in patch one, and it was in relation to some improvements we've done on search accuracy. Now, for customers that are on 2021.11, and I hope most of you are, um, obviously the, the, um, um, you'll, you'll see that we're already on uh, patch two because it's only uh, been a couple of months since, since the release. Uh, with that, we've got 10 fixes for SMAX customers, but no specific fixes for mixed mode uh, in that particular patch. A uh, couple of enhancements as part of that uh, are a SACM federation enhancement. Uh, and there's also uh, an, something related to our integration engine 
and the data import from SM to SMAX. Uh, and Jan will be talking about that in a moment. Um, but there's also a note that in patch one for the integration engine, there was an update for the SMAX to SMAX integration. So if you're utilizing that, uh, check those required additional steps as part of it. That uh, other thing, and probably one of the most important things to note as well, um, we have uh, obviously with these patches, we have included the log4j vulnerable uh, fixes for log4j. Um, obviously, uh, there's a security bulletin that came out from Microfocus Focus on that uh, before Christmas, uh, which included, should we say, hot fix and everything else. But we've made sure that they're included with these patches. Uh, I see, yes, Emmanuel uh, just uh, just posted out what which log4j is included in the latest patch. Patch release multiple versions, latest being 2.17.1. Good question. I don't know that off the top of my head. Hopefully, one of the other. Uh, uh, colleagues on the call can check that and uh, provide an answer. Um, um, but we'll we'll certainly um, provide the updates on that as part of it goes. But in regards to Log4j, I would definitely recommend obviously checking the security bulletin because that also has a lot more information about the issue and vulnerability. Okay, so with that, and obviously the mention about the uh, integration engine, I'm going to quickly go to the next slide. So as Part of patch two, uh, we have a, a new update for um, the integration engine, which relates to SM to SMAC. So, Jan, are you on the line? Yep. Hi, Dean, I'm here. Uh, good. So, uh, I thought it'd be good for, to get you to uh, talk to everyone about uh, what, what you've done, uh, or what's, what's happening coming out of R&D in relation to what's in this patch. Um, do you want to have a talk about it? I think you said you might want to do a little demo as well. Yes, um, I think it's the best to, to show it live in the product uh, to illustrate what we have implemented in the patch two for November release. Okay, okay. then I no. take over, Dean, okay? Yeah, you take over, that's all yours. Okay, Dean, can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Okay, great, thank you. So basically, as Dean started to introduce we with patch two, for the November release, we added some content to import data from Service Manager into SMAX. And um, as you see, as example, um, in this solution, we built eight scenarios in our newly developed uh, provided integration engine. And um, as part of that, you can see what kind of data we are importing from Service Manager into SMAC. SMAC is basically some static master data like locations, departments, groups, all the categories, for example, we, we take over operators, contacts, some services and computers, knowledge documents, and also service catalog items. Um, the main goal here is to enable partners and also customers, of course, to get a view how SMACs may look like with their service manager data. It does not, it's, it's not a migration tool to be clear here. We import just a subset of the data to enable really um, to give a SMACs demo with service manager data. For example, in the catalog, I will show you in a moment how the migrated, uh, how the imported data look like in SMACs or from the categorization, you know, the three level service manager categories are, make, are imported into SMACs and then you could open tickets then with a well-known categorization structure. As part of that, we also added some enhancements to the integration engine to make this work. Let me show this in the detail in the, in the very simple scenario. Like here, when we get our locations from service manager, that's the location data, right? When you query, uh, the service manager REST API, you get maybe a bunch of records returned. And here we store that, that is an array we receive. And now with the, with the patch two solution, we also it, uh, added an iterator function into the integration engine, which enables you to loop um, through an array, a JSON array, and then process every record, every data in that array one by one. So that's another enhancement in addition to the template, so the content we provided. We also added a new um, task here, which is that you can find here in the comment section, the apply to, um, apply to each task, which allows you to iterate through an array. 
because without that we could not um yeah import um more than one record so that's why was one reason to use this iterator but of course this iterator is also useful for for many other use cases where you may want to loop through an array so now let's demo this a little bit i don't show locations and departments that's quite simple let's show me one more complex scenario where we get the service manager categorization structure for example we start with the categories then we get the subcategories and the last level we get the areas and product types uh, some of you may be very familiar with these um, structure of service manager what we then import into into smacks and to run it we also added a new button here new trigger in in our integration engine which is called run scenario and as soon as the direction is set to inbound this button becomes available if it's set to outbound we expect the trigger from smacks so now let's have a first look at the category here you see it's empty there are no categories uh, imported at the moment and when you click on this button we will um, start the import we connect to our service manager you see the scenario is running now and of course now it takes a moment let me maybe briefly refresh to see if something was imported already sorry ah you see now some data is coming in we have the top level first you see and it started already to import the second level you know it's going bit by bit let's check if some of those oh yeah you see some of the third level is also here already and imported and we this scenario which is out of the box as template available only focuses on those three levels here so you see this is quite straightforward with the templates but of course it's matching to an out of the box service manager if there are customizations in other service manager systems you may need to change those scenarios here you know everything is editable you can change the queries against service manager you can change the iteration you can change the mapping then how the data is created in smacks all this is open and um, fully configurable just have seen that's how the integration and the import for category looks like and maybe another interesting but i pre-imported that before the meeting is um, the service catalog of service manager um yeah that's how it looks like when you simply import the standard out of the box demo data from service manager into smax you get those categories here you can then drill down into these categories and see some of the standard requests from um, service manager and when you click here you could also use it here to to submit it of course user option and fulfillment plans are not imported this is not possible and with that if there are no questions oh no one more thing as dean mentioned in patch one but also in patch two we improved the um, um smacks to smacks templates we provide out of the box the incident to incident oh i made a typo here and the request to request so you know now i also have two out of the box templates for smacks integrations to demo a case exchange between incidents and also to exchange request data and those templates are also available now out of the box and have been improved with patch one and patch two that's all i plan to share dean if there that's are great. no questions back to you yeah thank you uh, so jan there was uh, one question that came up uh mm -hmm. that i think is probably worth just just quickly covering so in regards to um the uh Smacks when service manager integration that we've got set up there. I think I know the answer to this one. Um, Volk has asked, is it possible to write back the ID of the Smacks entity back to service manager after transferring the data from service manager to Smacks? I think the answer is no at the moment. Is, am I correct yes, on that? Correct. At the moment yeah. on the service manager side, we only have implemented a get record action. So that means we cannot update at the moment records in service manager this is an enhancement we have in the backlog but it's not available as of today that's okay that's fantastic thanks for thanks for answering uh, that one um 
Uh, we've had a second question that's just come in as well from Chris. Uh, is the Smacks to Smacks uh, still limited to one Smacks tenant? Um, yes, per integration, you, it's linked to one Smacks tenant, and this is linked because you know um, the authentication works against one Smacks tenant only. You cannot authenticate generically across several Smacks tenants. Okay. Not a problem. That's great to hear. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jan. Uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to um, to, sh to show us that. And I hope you all uh, appreciate what he's put there. Um, I'll quickly switch back to me and share. You, <clears throat> okay. Hopefully I'm sharing the slides again. Yes, you are. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. <clears throat> That's good. All right, brilliant. So thank you, Jan. I really appreciate you taking your time. Um, so let's move forward now, and we're going to do a little bit of an overview of what's happened in Item Marketplace and the updates that we've had uh, there in the last few months. So um, we're going to quickly go through uh, some of these. So um, order to be uh, defined. Uh, so the first one I'm going to talk about is the uh, SMA support assistant. Uh, so the support assistant obviously allows you, gives you a UI, allows you to perform various health checks and operational activities, things like um, uh, doing a cluster rebalance. Uh, also allows you to access uh, log files uh, through through the through the through the browser rather than having to uh, potentially log onto a server and do anything from a command line and transfer it across. So it's a really useful uh, tool. Um, we've recently uh, updated it with some additional uh, capabilities. So we now support FIPS mode. Uh, the installation process is certainly a lot easier. And we're also supporting Kubernetes jobs operations. Um, there is additional documentation, and it's linked to from the main document uh, marketplace entry, but I always like putting the extra links in with these. Uh, but there is a specific page within the uh, SMACS documentation. Uh, I've put it in the latest version, but obviously it's in the previous versions as well, which just goes into more detail about um, capabilities. And uh, for, for those of you who may be like me, you like a bit of a visual understanding of what's going on or have a bit of a video around it, we did actually do a technical drill down on the SMACS support system back in September 2020. Yep, almost uh, uh, was that, 18 months ago, a year and a little bit ago. Um, uh, where we went into a few details around it. I think we actually did a, a little bit more of an update after that as well. But that one was certainly the, the first one where we introduced it and can give you a bit of an overview. So definitely worth recommending and checking that out. Um, and as I've put there in the bottom, uh, if you do prefer to run some of these scripts uh, from the command line, that's available as well. If you go to the marketplace, there's something that's listed as the SMA doctor. That's the actual scripts that's used by the support system and you can download those to your environment as well. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, service management automation monitor. So what we've done is obviously with Kubernetes, one of the common uh, monitoring tools uh, for, for that, or should we say providing dashboards and uh, monitoring overall is, is Prometheus. Um, and what we've done is we've uh, created a number of dashboards for Prometheus uh, for helping with collect statistics, uh, obviously about CPU, memory, uh, pods and services across across the suite. Um, we've updated that with some additional dashboards for RabbitMQ uh, and general VM status. If you're if you're running on a uh, non uh, bring your own Kubernetes or non cloud deployment, um, and also enabled SSL for the fetching of the data. Documentation as as the specific page about the documentation capabilities. Uh, sorry about the specific monitoring capabilities uh, that we provide as as part of that um, and I think it's really worth looking into that because there's a lot of quite cool stuff that you can do with this including potentially sending uh, notifications and what's also useful is actually we link to all that as part of the support assistant so uh, as part of the UI of the support assistant it's got the appropriate links in there to get this set up and then potentially once enabled uh, how allows you access to it as part of it. Uh, uh, so question Danny, can the SMA monitor toolkit apply to the bring your own Kubernetes? Yes, it can. I do believe it can. Um, uh, I think it actually mentions that on the marketplace page. Okay. 
Uh, next up is the SMA Operation Toolkit. So these are a number of scripts uh, that are available as a package on the marketplace. Uh, it's actually one of our very first toolkits that we brought out when we first introduced uh, uh, the SMA Suite, Tenor Suite, um, and has been continually been improved uh, quite a number of times. And in fact, uh, some of these are uh, scripts are actually now part of the uh, support system as we moved on. Um, with the way this one's been set up, the documentation is a README file that's included as part of the package with details about each of the different uh, uh, scripts uh, that are available. Um, and some of those scripts have specific pages uh, in the in the documentation. So that's why I've not linked to a any specific pages uh, in this instance. Uh, but the toolkit definitely got some good use, especially if you need to look at things like DR or maybe you've had issues in the past with Rabbit MQ. Uh, okay. Next up, uh, so uh, for those that know me and what I do within the pro uh, product management team, you'll know that I help run uh, the, uh, the development of uh, or should we say coordinated development on uh, mobile for uh, for uh, uh, SMACs. Um, and one of the things that maybe you might not be aware of is uh, with the uh, mobile development, we also make the uh, Android APK file, uh, obviously it's signed, but we make it available uh, on the marketplace for you to download uh, in case you've got issues with obviously trying to use the Google Play Store uh, for downloading those Android files. Obviously, with iOS, there's a little bit more of a, a control that they put on with, uh, should we say, side loading of apps, whereas with Android, it's it's a little bit more flexible. And I know from speaking to some of our customers, they have issues with using the Google Play Store uh, for their for their mobile devices uh, that they manage within their environment. So uh, we've provided the APK file on there. Um, we update the APK file, uh, sorry, uh, um, the mobile app. Uh, every 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 quarter, uh, so that's something that we we always do. So um, every three months, uh, we'll push out with obviously, or, or should we say, uh, aligned with when we do releases. Um, uh, and obviously, as we go forward, even though there's potential changes to the way that the amount of releases that we're doing in a year, we'll still be uh, bringing mobile app updates uh, every every three months. Um, and we'll obviously update the APK file as, as part of that. So the latest version that's available uh, is tied to what we uh, talked about in the 2020-11 release readiness webinar. Uh, so that includes uh, further progress on the agent mobile early access. So now with um, uh, the activity log, uh, access uh, adding solutions, uh, being able to see involved CIs and related records, Plus, we did an update to the, the login to make it uh, more, more improved. Um, and the other thing that I want to note as well, uh, we now have a separate documentation uh, uh, section or site uh, specifically for mobile, um, because obviously that has different, you say, system requirements to the actual application. Um, so that's available uh, at that link as well. Um, and certainly as we go forward and hopefully uh, towards uh, uh, May, we'll have, uh, we'll, we'll certainly have uh, progressed and hopefully have um, Agent Mobile uh, GA on Android at that point. Okay, uh, another update that I wanted to make you all aware of. Uh, so we also have uh, Operations Orchestration uh, SMACS Content Pack. So uh, for those of you who may or may not be aware, uh, we have the product operations orchestration, uh, which is part of uh, the enterprise service management uh, uh, suite uh, portfolio of products. Um, and that has significant number of different content packs available to it, but there is one that's specifically for connecting uh, with SMACs. Uh, and for those, that's ever, uh, um, for those of you who may not have seen the integration, there's a really nice integration between OO and SMACs uh, setting it up from SMAX. So if you want to initiate from SMAX uh, to do particular OO calls, that's built into there. Um, but we've got uh, the this content pack, which you can obviously download and apply. And that includes some standard SMAX functions for create, update, uh, delete and query entities, as well as specific ones have been set up for incident and request as well. And it also could be used potentially for integrations to other products as well. So things like uh, Octane, uh, from Microvox perspective, Octane, 
and the uh, older HCM, not HCMX, I want to make that clear. Uh, obviously, HCMX is now technically part of SMACS, um, but also to uh, third party products like JIRA uh, or SAP Solution Manager. Um, you can go obviously the documentation uh, talks about that content, but one of the reasons for obviously mentioning this and, and, and highlighting to you is that all SMACS customers get two free concurrent workflow, workflow licenses for free with your entitlement. So uh, you have the ability to go and try this out, connect it to your SMACS instance, and maybe start to see the power of automation within your organization. I think it's a really good thing to start looking at uh, and, and investigating how things can be improved. Next up, uh, in a similar vein, we've got the Universal Discovery uh, Content Pack. So, uh, for those that may or may not be aware, uh, may not be aware, uh, Universal Discovery is obviously uh, part of uh, uh, historically part of UCMDB or the, the CMS uh, that we use within uh, Enterprise Service Management Solution. Um, and there's a bit of a, should we say, a decoupled setup uh, with that. So you have the main, uh, should we say, uh, base universal product, uh, universal discovery product, but then you have the content packs that we release on a regular basis, uh, which include new features and new functionality, but also to accommodate uh, new, uh, maybe um, new, new OSs or new software that comes out uh, over time. With the latest updates, uh, we've added new capabilities for the existing discoveries on a lot of the uh, cloud platforms, so AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, et cetera. Um, we've also added some updates to the inventory jobs uh, to get installation date of installed software, uh, as well as support for Windows Server 2022 and Windows uh, 11. So um, the content packs has its own, should we say, site. It's like a mini sub-site. Uh, within there, but I've linked through to the 20.11 uh, homepage. Um, and obviously, a bit like the OO, we also give you some free entitlement to uh, discovery licenses as well. So you get 50 premium discovery licenses as part of uh, your SMA entitlement, uh, and you can download that uh, from the software entitlement portal. Okay, so that's kind of gone a bit of a uh, look through the updates that we've had um, on the marketplace, which is, you say, the, the, the general uh, updates. I'm just going to quickly check on any questions that come through, see if there's any that are relevant to answer at this point. Okay, we just had a few come through. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, so, do we have any news are about OO in uh, CDF and Volker. So if we're talking about multi-tenant OO within a containerized uh, uh, deployment, uh, that's something that um, uh, we we are at, we have now available, uh, should we say, within SaaS. OO is available in SaaS, and that's using a, a setup of multi-tenant version of OO, and that's something that's going to be available uh, later this year. Um, and we'll be we're talking about that more as we get closer to uh, I think the May release. Um, A question from Emmanuel, have you now switched to buy yearly working release cadence? Haven't seen an invite for a 2022 release readiness meeting as yet. Uh, yeah, so uh, the next uh, on-premise release that we will have will be 2022.05. Uh, um, and we'll obviously do a release readiness for that closer to the time. Uh, can the free 50 UD license be applied to purposes? Uh, so, uh, but yeah, the, the 50 free licenses can be consumed alongside paid licenses as well. Uh, I believe um, uh, they should be available to download from the software entitlement portal, I think, uh, with a license file, um, or I might be wrong, and it might be something that you can download from within the, the package within SMACS. I don't know, uh, producer Steve, if you're online and can confirm or deny if I've got that correct. Uh, that would be useful. I'm going to post that in the in the questions. Okay, uh, let's move it on, and we'll go to the next uh, next section. So we want to talk about uh, new apps that are available uh, to be consumed by Smack. So that's Smack Studio apps. Uh, and uh, the good news is, is someone I wanted to uh, uh, talk about their particular app is on the line. So I'm going to attempt to make Chris uh, and unmute him. So. I'm going to try and unmute you, Chris. Can you, uh, are you there, Chris? Can you talk? 
You might need to actually unmute yourself, I think. No. Uh, let's try that. Let's see if that works. Uh, Hi, Chris. Can you can you hear us? Do you, uh, can you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you now. Yes, that's right. I just quickly <laughs> made you a panelist so you could so you could talk. Sorry about that. I was uh, <clears throat> never never ask someone that works in IT to uh, work IT. Should we say? Uh, so thank you, Chris. Uh, if you want to give us a bit of an update about the app that you that you put together, that would be really good. Thanks, Dean, and good evening to all. Yes, uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, just give you a quick overview of this application. Um, so what we have seen um, from a South African perspective, as well as from our customers in RMI and Africa, um, which range from you know various types of industries, with COVID and um, the rapid shifts and um, looking at new things and, and ways to protect organizations, there, there's been a significant shift in understanding risk and managing risk in the organization, um, whether it's internal risk as, as well as external risk, and applying some sort of methodology behind that uh, and making it formal. The problem is what we have seen is um, mostly that is um, done by Excel with no framework behind it, as well as finding supporting data to manage this risk, as well as how do we identify whether something is a risk or is troublesome. <clears throat> Now, if you look at it from a core process perspective, a lot of these risks typically are identified from incident management or from changes. A lot of risk details can be found in, in knowledge. So, you know, a lot of the artifacts that supports a, a, a risk environment it already exists inside the SMAX platform. So um, we thought, why not, you know, bolster that out and build something inside SMAX. We tested it against the customer and, my, and the customer and myself uh, you know, we wrote this together from, from the requirements. We have demoed this to, to quite a range of customers, uh, of our customers, um, ranging from uh, the banking industry. Customers have been quite quite interested in it. But at its core is to manage two types of risks, um, which would be business risks. You know, this would be anything from reputational to financial to competitive risk, as well as IT risk, you know, security, um, and real-time threats and all these type of things, we need to manage that. And what we have done as part of this application is we did some research on all sorts of frameworks from a risk management perspective. And we tried to put the best elements of each into the into the application so that we can leverage you know, from clear data things um, like a SWOT, a normal SWOT analysis, into um, where we do calculations of residual as well as organizational and inheritable risk. Um, we believe it's we, we, we covered all the bases. Obviously, there's a lot of space for new things and enhancements, and we are looking alongside the customer as well as some of, some of the other customers that are, have implemented this already into their environments on how we can make this um, take the app to the next level. Uh, we're quite exciting. This app's quite exciting for us. Thanks. That's great, Chris. Uh, appreciate yeah, that's brilliant. So thank you for giving us the overview of, of what you've put together there. Uh, I think it's a really good uh, example of a studio app and, and what can what can be built. So again, thank you, thank you for uh, talking us through it. Not a problem. Okay, right. Uh, so apologies, Chris. I'm just going to mute now so I can uh, take back control. Uh, right. So let's move on to the next one that we have in there. So. Um, Arguably, maybe not necessarily a studio app, but I thought it was important to kind of group it into this. Uh, we do have a uh, update from a company called Alert Ops. Uh, they've built out a uh, integration uh, between their SaaS platform and uh, SMACS. This is designed to allow and empower teams to collaborate in real time to resolve business critical incidents faster. So it's about multi channel alerting. Uh, and obviously helping to enable uh, response and, re and overall resolution. Um, there is, uh, obviously you go to their website, there's details, there's also a quick video that's available on the, on the uh, marketplace uh, uh, page. 
Um, and obviously they have their documentation available uh, either on the web page, but there's also a PDF available on Marketplace. Um, it is obviously an additional paid for uh, application, uh, but they do offer a free trial if you want to take a look at it uh, and uh, for yourself and see if there's any benefits for you within your organization. Uh, but we thought we'd mention that one as part of the apps. Uh, next up uh, is one of the uh, Smacks Timber award winner uh, apps, uh, and that's Change Risk Assessment. So uh, this particular app uh, was an update to a, an existing app that we had on uh, the marketplace. So uh, some of you may remember back in uh, 2020, uh, yeah, way back when in them dim, dark, dark days, um, uh, we did a little, should we say, uh, app challenge uh, over, over a week. And as part of that, there was an app called uh, a change risk assessment app that was created uh, by someone within Microfocus Professional Services. Well, uh, in Smack September last year, um, uh, someone else from um, our professional services, uh, Anton, um, uh, he did an update to the app uh, and uh, won one of the awards during September for it. And as part of that, basically made it a lot more flexible. So there's a lot more now uh, controls in there, allowed to set different sets of questions for different uh, areas uh, that might want to perform a risk assessment. Uh, added the ability to put rich text into those questions, maybe even drop images and that kind of thing, um, as well as uh, putting proper roles and permissions on there so you can have full uh, role-based control. Um, and also set it so there's a risk rating for the change is now calculated based on a percentage of the actual score versus the maximum score for that risk assessment of that record. So it allows, should we say, that uh, the, the, the change manager to do proper risk assessment across uh, the different uh, comparatively uh, between different changes and it's it's a really good update and we've had some really positive feedback about this uh, for some of the customers that have already deployed it already so that's the change risk assessment app uh, available to download today uh, next up is another uh, market focus uh, deployed uh, studio app and that's change advisory board management uh, and this one's really all about managing that cab uh, so the change manager can build out that cab schedule, plan and, and organize those cab meetings, um, set out obviously an appropriate agenda, identify and select the changes that are going to be reviewed, send out the meeting invites and obviously make them available on the change calendar as well. Uh, and obviously it obviously can be integrated into Teams. Now, uh, I'm not going to say much more than that because I think really the, the best thing to do is go and watch the, uh, the YouTube video that's been put together for this app. Um, obviously I can't read that out, but uh, we'll make sure that's, avail that's available on the marketplace. So head on over to the marketplace, you can click on the link to go and look at the video. So that's the Change Advisory Board Management app available today. Uh, next app that we want to cover off is the Major Incident Management app. Uh, this was done at another one of our Smax Timber Award winners. Uh, so we're uh, two, of two of three. Uh, and um, this one was done um, by Lucas from uh, Dibor Nixdorf uh, and basically built out a studio app for, should we say, managing the major incident, uh, major incident management process. So there's a lot of good content that was produced as part of this, a lot of documentation, and should we say, best practices around handling major incidents. So it gives you all the creation and documentation and steps to uh, for obviously re-establishing services uh, during any kind of major incident. Also the ability to validate and compare incidents and, you know, based on the criteria that you want to set as part of that. So whether it's a major incident, or maybe it's maybe you want to market something as lower uh, priority. Um, also gives you an escalation matrix, you were saying uh, with a business representative, so you can make sure and manage that. As well as um, go down the route of into problem management with preventative measures for establishment of your root cause analysis. So it's a really good, uh, powerful app, and again, uh, another one that I think is definitely worth going and taking a look into, uh, download and have a play around with that one, and uh, see the benefits of that major incident management app in Smacks. Okay, so that's the updates uh, that we've got, and I've I say I've, I've uh, if you go across, obviously, to the Microfocus Marketplace, you'll be able to see them all in, 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 in should we say, sorted by new, and you'll see all those at the top of the list. But there are many other studio apps available on there. There's many other uh, 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 Marketplace 
items uh, for SPACs that you can potentially download, you know, including things like our, our SharePoint or Confluence connectors uh, for, for knowledge management, uh, should you need them. Uh, so feel free to go over there. So with that, we're getting towards the end of the session. I have uh, two requests, uh, should we say, uh, of you all for attending this session, the SMACS user group session today. Uh, so the first one uh, really is in relation to uh, Gartner uh, and their peer, peer insights program. Now, I don't know how many of you are aware of uh, the Gartner peer insights, but um, Gartner obviously produced the Magic Quadrant and, and all those uh, reviews of the various different uh, vendors and their, and their products that they have across lots of different um, uh, port, uh, different uh, software. Um, have uh, the peer insights is where they're looking for uh, customers and organizations that are using the tools uh, to provide feedback uh, around um, the, the, those products. And one of the things uh, that they're quite keen to do is, is now they're, they're, should we say, pushing a bit more forward and a bit making that more prominent the way that they're, should we say, looking at how they rate and review and for, look at things like the Magic Quadrant. So what we're really looking for is just, you know, uh, if you've got time, to, you know, take five minutes. We really appreciate you writing a review uh, about Smacks, you know, uh, and putting some details in there. You know, and one of the things that we're going to be keen to look at as well is, is look at that and, and how we can utilize that to help improve the products as we go forward. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a, a, a an understanding of what uh, Gartner do around that. Uh, so um, when you create an account on the Peer Insights uh, site, um, you know, they don't provide any, info, you know, they don't identify you by name or employer, any basic demographics, you know, maybe sort of, should we say, uh, some predefined job roles or uh, types of industry that your co uh, company is, is, is in. Uh, so none of that is visible uh, when you write a review. Um, they also kind of recommend either using business email address uh, or signing in with, say, like LinkedIn. Um, I think that's more from a verification process. Um, I know from previous conversations that we've had uh, with Gartner, um, they've had issues with uh, potential people trying to uh, uh, spoil the system by signing up with, uh, 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 should we say, personal email addresses, that kind of thing. Um, um, and but one of the things that I think is quite important uh, and certainly something I wanted to highlight is there's no limit on the individuals from the same company to provide a review. So, um, you know, feel free to get other your colleagues in different roles that are using SMACs. If you're interested, you know, if, they're, if they'd be interested to put a review, we'd be interested to see their, their feedback and how that's being utilized across the, across the company. Um, and the other thing to note as well is um, while they have their reviews in the way, the way that it's set up, um, in terms of how they they show that those reviews, they typically reset that each year. So typically, when you go there, you tend to only see, should we say, the, the last twelve months uh, of of reviews on there. So it does mean that, um, and, and something that I'm quite interested to see is, you know, reviews from people not just that have just recently bought Smacks or just started their journey on their implementation, but I keen to see get that feedback about, um, you know, yourselves if you've been using it for quite a while. Um, and, and how you've grown with the products and put some feedback on that. So um, as a favor, should we say a request uh, from me? Uh, and maybe, you know, in return, I maybe not do as many of these Smash user group sessions or you don't have to put up with me as much. We'd really appreciate your support uh, to doing that, uh, to, to get involved and in dropping an in, uh, a peer insight. Okay, um, so that takes me on to my second uh, request to you all. Um, oh, yes, one final thing just to note, we don't actually have any visibility of your submissions. Uh, we only, see, should we say, see them when, when they go live on the site. Uh, but if you have uh, decided to, to, to go forward, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to me directly uh, or reach out through the community pages um, and, and really just, you know, want to get an idea and understanding your feedback because Gartner have also asked us to, you know, should we say, provide them feedback on how people are using the site as well. So uh, you know, again, you don't have to do that, but it's obviously much appreciated if you did. Okay, so the second favor that I'd uh, like, uh, should we say, request that I have um, is about this Smacks user group uh, and the sessions that we run. So from our perspective, should we say to date, obviously we have those three categories. We have the office hours, we have the release readiness, and then sometimes we do topics where we dive into a topic 
um, and and do a bit of a deep dive. And a lot of those tend to be driven, should we say, a little bit from us and what we're, what we're involved in. Um, but for this year, as we go into 2022 and, and, and as we go forward, we're really keen to, should we say, you know, bring this a little bit more interactive, uh, a bit more collaborative. Um, we're not expecting you to, should we say, actively, uh, you know, present on these sessions, although we're always welcome uh, if you are interested in doing so. You know, um, like I got Chris earlier on, or, or like Jan from R&D to, to, to talk as well. But we're really keen to get the ideas uh, what topics you'd like to see. So, um, you know, feel free to put some of them in the chat now, you know, into the uh, into the questions of potential topics you'd like, you'd be interested in seeing in the future. Um, likewise, um, when we come around, I'll talk about our next session, our next office hour session, um, you know, feel free to, to bring them up as part of that if you want to have a think about it and come back to us. Uh, but really for, for me, you know, we want to make sure that you're going to get the most out of, out of what we're doing here. Um, and actually, personally, I'll also be looking to use that to uh, potentially look at some of the topics we might uh, look for Smack September uh, later this year. Okay. So with that, we come to the end of uh, today's session. So just as a reminder, um, obviously, if you register, and when you register, it'll only add it to your calendar for the for the update after that. So you will need to either uh, put a recurring calendar appointment in there. Uh, but if you always go to uh, uh, Smack's user group topic, for each week you can see if there's any cancellation or changes. Um, but it's always useful to 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 do that and block it out. And obviously, the way GoToWebinar works, it does remember your login uh, the last time. So normally, you just need to uh, accept the terms and you're straight into the session uh, on the day. Uh, upcoming sessions uh, that we've got planned. So I've listed out the next two uh, in here. We'll update the Smax user group site uh, with, with a bit more detail. So uh, the next session in two weeks on February the 2nd will be in office hours. So again, going back to that uh, conversation of potential further topics for later in the year, feel free to come forward and post them there uh, during that session. Um, maybe even we can have a bit of a discussion about those potential topics and what you're interested in. We'll be happy to hear from you. Um, and then on February the 16th, uh, we'll be having uh, Jan back uh, to give us a bit more of an in-depth uh, update on the integration engine, uh, some of the capabilities that's part of it, um, and some of the other things that we've got planned and upcoming around that. So I think that would be a really good session, really in-depth se in session, where today was just a bit of a teaser to get you excited for, for a month from now. Uh, and with that, I'd like to say uh, thank you. I uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, and I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next Max User Group. Thank you.